Okay, so we're back after a reboot. We now have the I2C port enabled on the Raspberry Pi so we can interface with peripheral hardware connected to it. So now we need a way to do that. Uh, one of the simplest ways is with a uh, terminal program called I2C Tools. So we're going to go into the terminal and since this is a fresh Raspberry Pi, we want to update apt-get. So we're going to say sudo apt-get update. Okay, so after our apt-get uh, get update, we're actually ready to start installing uh, some packages. So the first thing we're going to install is I2C tools. So we're going to enter sudo apt-get install i2c-tools. Okay, now we have I2C tools installed. I2C tools is a terminal program that allows you to very simply interface with peripheral devices connected to the I2C port. Um, you know, if you just want to simply turn things on or off or detect devices on the port, this is the tool to use. I highly recommend having it uh, available if for nothing else other than troubleshooting purposes. Um, so we can do a lot of things with, uh, with I2C tools. We can detect connected devices we can uh, write commands to them, we can take readings from them. Um, it's, a, it's a great uh, tool for those very simple needs. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to detect our device on the I2C port so we can find its I2C bus address. Let's talk about that a little bit. I2C devices are connected to what's called the I2C bus. There are I2C slave devices and I2C master devices. In this case, the Raspberry Pi is our master device and our relay controller is the slave device. Slave devices on the I2C bus have addresses. These are single byte addresses that go from 0 to 127 uh, in decimal format. So that means that we can have you know, up to 127 total devices connected to the port or to the bus at any one time. That said, not every device supports addresses uh, where you can set them to any byte from 0 to 127. In particular, the relay controller that we have only supports up to four addresses, which means we can only have up to four of these particular devices connected to the same port at the same time. This particular device has onboard address jumpers. These address jumpers allow you to modify the device's I2C bus address. I don't have any jumpers installed on this board, so by default, its I2C bus address is going to be 0x20 in hex or 32 in decimal format. We, those bus addresses are extremely important. That is how you target devices on the bus because keep in mind we can have a huge number of different devices on the same I2C bus and we need a way to individually communicate with each of those devices. Addresses are how you do that but addresses are also one of the things that cause a lot of confusion. Using a tool like I2C tools makes this a lot more palatable to understand. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is let's scan the I2C bus and see what's on it. So to do that, we're going to use the command I2C detect R1. Um, I2C detect is going to basically show us all available devices on the I2C port. Uh, the dash R is a command flag that we're not going to worry about right now, and 1 is the I2C port to scan. Raspbian, to my knowledge, only has one available I2C port, um, and it is uh, delimited as port 1. Um, other platforms have multiple I2C ports um, that you can access, and some of that depends on the, uh, the image that is installed. Uh, in our case, we're using Raspbian. Um, but we won't get into that too much. Um, that's why I say, you know, there's a lot of resources about Raspberry Pi on the internet, and if you want inf more information, 
Google is a wonderful tool. So we'll go ahead and enter this command. And we're going to say yes to that. And here we're going to see uh, the return from the command. So we can see a device and it's showing up as 20. So that is our relay controller. As, as I said before, its default ITC address is 20. Now you'll see, let's go ahead and install address jumper 1 on the relay board and see what happens. Sorry, I guess that jumper is actually labeled on the board as A0. Um, so we went ahead and installed that jumper. Now we're going to hit this command again. Yep, I need to enter that dash Y flag. Oh, there you go. Now we see uh, we have an address of 21. So if we take that jumper and we move it to the A1 pin, and issue the command again, and this time with the dash Y flag, because I get tired of answering that, in our dash Y, and then we won't get that prompt. Now we see it's at address 22. So you can see how the onboard address jumpers allow you to change the address of the device. This is very useful if you're going to have more than one of this controller on the same I2C bus. Or you happen to have another controller that is using the address of 20, and then you want to put this uh, relay controller on there as well. The, this relay controller and the other device can't both use address 20. You can only have one device on the I2C bus that has an address of 20. So very important um, to know how to use those address jumpers. So let's go ahead and uh, remove that jumper again. And just for kicks, there we go. We have it removed and we see the address is indeed 20. So now at this point, we, can, uh, we know that the address of the device is 20. We know that it's properly connected to the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi I2C bus is working. So we're going to call that step one complete. Now the next thing that we're going to want to do is actually test this relay controller. So you could write an application and do this and do that and get really complicated about it to just test out your controller for the first time. I prefer to use I2C tools if I can, um, if I'm just testing something out. So I'm actually going to write a command here that is going to um, turn the relay on the board on and off. So if we want to turn the relay on and off, first off, we need to know the, how, how to do that. We need to know the commands uh, to turn the relays on and off. Briefly, we'll go over the I2C protocol and how uh, basically we send control commands to the device. We've already covered addressing. Now let's cover how we actually make this thing turn a relay on. I2C devices basically are chips that have registers inside of them. These registers are single byte uh, slots that you can read and write from. There are control registers, read registers, and set registers or configure registers. A configure register is basically uh, a setting for that chip. So this particular chip um, is a 8-channel digital I.O. multiplexer. What that means is there are 8 I.O. lines on this controller. Those are input or output lines. So we need to set the direction of those registers. We have a relay connected to uh, to the first I.O. line and then the other I.O. lines, we can set those to inputs or outputs. Um, so for this uh, particular thing, I'm going to keep it real simple and we're going to set all the uh, lines to outputs. We're going to do that by writing to a register in the chip. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So we're going to use the I2C set tool. We're going to enter the dash Y flag so it doesn't ask us if we're sure we want to do that. And then uh, we're going to enter the, uh, the first thing we need to enter is the bus address. Uh, as we discussed before, the Raspberry Pi's bus address for the I2C port is 1. Uh, that's always going to be 1 in this uh, particular setup. The next byte we need to enter is the slave I2C device address, which we know is 0x20 from I2C detect. Now we need to write to a register. Um, the first couple of commands that we need to send here are going to be configuration bytes. The first one that we're going to write is going to be to set all I.O. lines to outputs. 
And that is uh, that particular register is at register 0x00. The byte that we want to write to that register is 0x00. Um, that's going to set all the lines to outputs. If we wanted to set them all to inputs, we would uh, write to register 0, but we would write 0xff. And uh, that's all that we need to do there, so we'll hit enter to send that. Okay. Now we need to uh, write 0x00 to um, 06, I believe. And uh, this is the IO line pull up register. Um, really, it's not really applicable to what we're doing right now because you only use the pull up register if you're pulling inputs high. Um, so whenever you pull those inputs low to ground, you can see that they've been triggered. Um, we'll get into that later, um, but just go ahead and send that command. So we're writing to register six and we're writing a value of zero. Okay, those are the only two configuration commands required to make this board work. Now you want to keep those two commands in mind. If you were writing, say, a Python script to control these, at the very beginning of the Python script, whenever your Raspberry Pi first boots up and the controller first boots up, we always need to write to these registers to, to set these two settings. Um, these are just two things that we'll do on boot up and then we don't have to do it again until the controller loses power or we power cycle or something like that. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is actually turn the relays on and off. So to do that, we're going to um, do I2C set. Actually, let's talk about getting this information. Where would you get this information? How would I know which register and what bytes to write to actually make this thing do something? A lot of that information is available on Control Everything's website. So what you'd want to do is come to controlleverything.com and you'd want to find the product that you're working with. We're working with a controller. It is a relay controller. This particular controller is what we call clock cross-platform because it just has a couple I2C ports on it, in and then out, so it can be connected to anything. Uh, today we have connected to Raspberry Pi, so we'll click on cross-platform. Our board has one relay on it. Really all we're doing here is narrowing things down. Okay, and uh, the con particular controller I have today is a one-channel DPDT relay board, so we'll click on that. Okay, so now we're on the products page on Control Everything's site for the product we're actually using. What we want to do is we want to look under resources. Uh, the product pages on the site may change over time, but you're always going to access resources for that product on the product page in one way or another. Currently, this is under resources. And under resources, we have all these code samples. Now, we can use any one of these code samples to get the bytes that we need here. We'll look at the Python code sample. So we'll click on that, and then we'll click on Python. Now let's just take a look at sample one. So let's look at what's going on here. They've got something called SMBus, don't know what that is. Um, they've got something, uh, bus.writeData. Oh, what is that? What's that mean? Well, it looks like they're writing to address 20. That sounds familiar. And they're writing to register 0, and they're writing a byte of 0. OK, so that's what we did already. And then we, if we look down here, OK, we've got something, uh, address 20, writing to register 9, and they're writing a value of FF. So let's give that a shot. I think, that as, as this says, it turns on all the relays. Okay, so let, let's give this a shot. We're writing to register 9 and a value of 0xff. So let's see what that does. So we'll write i2c set dash y bus 1 on the pi. 0x20 is the slave address we're writing to. Writing to register 9. And we're going to write a value of 0xff and we'll send that. And we can see the relay turns on. So if we change that 0xff to 00, what happens? The relay turns off. Basically what register 0x09 is, uh, that is a register to set the outputs. 
Um, so what we're doing is we're basically setting all outputs to on or all outputs to off. If we use FF, that sets them all to on. If we use zero, it sets them all to off. So there you go. You just turned relays on and off from a Raspberry Pi. That's a pretty nice second step. We've learned how to use I2C tools for, uh, to very simply detect devices on the port and to uh, control those devices on the port. So let's move on to step three and write a Python application. <laughs>